Tomo meditation. So if you see this video as the very first one, please check out the Tomo introduction and the Tomo breathing video we've done it's because this video is already part three of our three part mini introduction to the Tibetan Buddhist meditation of Tomo. And one thing that's really important to say is that Tomo is a vast and complex technique and that in this video we only do a very simple uh, basic Tomo practice. Yeah, the version from the tradition of Nikuma. Yes, so it's actually one of the uh, introductory Tomo practices of the Six Yogas of Nikuma, mm. which is probably the most simple and mo uh, most simple authentic Tomo practice that yeah. one can do. Because any other Tomo practice, if it's an authentic one that we are aware of, it is more complicated, uh, both in visualization and technique. Mm. Or if there are other methods that are simple, then it's usually things we find on YouTube and that is actually not Buddhist Tomo at all. So, uh, because general Tomo practice, just to give that uh, insight, it comes from the Chakra Sambara Tantra, that's the Tantra that Buddha Shakyamuni taught and Chakra Samvara meaning wheel of supreme bliss, transforming our perception into a state of enlightened joy and happiness. And the Tumo practice taught in the Chakra Samvara Tantra uh, contains three channels that are visualized, four different chakras and four mantric syllables. And then there's all types of uh, things happening basically. <laughs> yeah? We're igniting the energy forefinger that's below the navel, bring it to the crown, that later that melting. descends, mm -hmm. and at the end we bring it into the heart. So there are all types of things actually happening. Mm -hmm. But as a, as a most simple and authentic tumor practice, that preliminary technique of the six yogas of Niguma that we are going to do now, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a really a wonderful introduction yeah. for tumor meditation. Because other um, methods um, of Tomo, uh, other transmissions really require like weeks or even months of preparation and, and also introduction. Uh, and this is also something that we do um, because we have the, the online uh, community that we um, practice together. Yeah, we, so we have an ongoing Tomo class, a weekly Tomo class, which we already have plenty of recordings available at the time of uh, shooting this uh, introduction series and yeah it, it takes a few weeks to get familiar with all of the stages of tumor practice and of course we also regularly have various online programs uh, also with our teacher Lama Glenn Mullen and yeah it, it takes a few weeks to get to use to uh, yeah. tumor so here we're really doing most simple but still an authentic tumor practice yeah because we want to show you something that is authentic we don't claim that you're going to train Tumo in various uh, traditions only from that video. That's why we are linking other events for you if you would wish to attend. But this is a taste of the traditional authentic Tumo practice in a very simple form. Niguma has very intuitive way of bringing about the internal transformation and you will see how simple it is in the principle. But for the most, m more elaborate versions from the, a little bit different traditions, um, like uh, the Tumo from Amitayus Hayagriva, Chakra Samvara or uh, Vajrayogini, we will link that to you below the video. Yes, so yeah, let's start with the meditation. And because in the part two, we did the Tumo breathing and we've just taught the vast breathing in itself. So now, because we'll do an actual meditation, we will do it into a Tibetan Buddhist context, into a, a, a context of enlightenment training, which means at the beginning we will take refuge and we generate bodhicitta. Bodhicitta meaning enlightenment mind. And Enlightenment mind, what does it mean, enlightenment mind? The right attitude of uh, love and compassion being generated. But we'll, we'll guide it in a simple and easy to follow way, so no worries about that. So just for uh, the beginners not to confuse it with enlightened mind, it doesn't mean that we have this enlightened mind right now, so we don't need to train to achieve enlightenment. <laughs> enlightened mind meaning like bodhicitta attitude. So we generate the motivation that I mentioned in the previous video, that we want to obtain enlightenment 
for the sake of everyone that lives and is conscious because we don't want to do it egoistically only for ourselves just to be happy and and be be, be free from any type of uh, sorrows from from this mundane world but we want to achieve it as an event to also help other beings to be liberated and from this attitude from this motivation which is called enlightened mind or enlightened attitude we start our tomo buddhist practice yes and it's probably very logical because thinking about the meaning of life from a my personal understanding what buddhism is teaching what the buddha was teaching is the highest meaning probably is to understand what the heck is going on yeah. <laughs> so understanding mm. who we really are and um, mm. once we have that realization there's no other purpose than sharing that knowledge with others so it's a very naturally embedded uh, thing plus it's said that an enlightened state of mind naturally has love and compassion so if we as not being enlightened can generate some love and compassion we already come closer to the higher purpose and that's why we do that at the beginning of every meditation and that of course uh, also means for the, at the beginning of every tumor practice yes. so here we go let's kick off we are sitting uh, straight with the shoulders relaxed if you can sit in a half or even a full lotus that's perfect but otherwise sitting on a chair or on a, that's completely fine as well ideally the back is uh, straight upright shoulders relaxed but not overstretched it's still quite relaxing so the um, shoulders can relax while you keep your spine pretty much straight and hands folded in the lap and then at the beginning to bring the mind into the present moment and to relax the mind we we'll just focus on the breath as it comes and goes at the tip of our nose Whenever we notice that we are distracted or our mind is wandering, we just bring it back to the breath as it comes and goes. And then we take refuge and we take refuge in the Buddha and the Buddha here is not the historical Buddha but the enlightened state of our own mind so we take refuge in that enlightened state of mind the Buddha we take refuge in the Dharma which are all the teachings that lead us to that deeper realization of who we really are and we also take refuge in the Sangha that's the community of practitioners and all beings that support our journey to a higher purpose in life. So the, these are the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, in which we take refuge. And in terms of a Buddha mind, uh, we all have the access to it or we are having the nature of a Buddha. So our mind is naturally in a Buddha state. But we cannot discover it right now in the present state, being overwhelmed with the mundane reality. And this is what we want to get deeper into, understand it and we shed it of our veils and distractions of who we are to really touch on the core, who we are, which is the Buddha mind. That's why we take refuge in it. This is where we go. This is what we want to do. So we take refuge in the Buddha, Dharma and Sangha until our full enlightenment is achieved. Then through the power of the six paramitas, which are various uh, virtuous uh, activities like generosity and patience and so forth, 
may we make the wish that may we attain full enlightenment for the benefit of all sentient beings. And then we also generate bodhicitta, the enlightened mind, by means of reciting the four immeasurables. May all sentient beings have happiness and the cause of happiness, be free from suffering and the cause of suffering, never be separated from great happiness that is free of suffering, and rest in great equanimity, free of attachment and aversion. And then we do a short emptiness meditation, so-called emptiness meditation, which we invoke with uh, at the emptiness mantra, Om Sobhava Shuddha Sarva Dharma Sobhava Shuddha Ham. And with the recitation of that mantra, then we'll just meditate on the empty nature of all phenomena. And because if we look at all the things we perceive in the world in our mind, they haven't been there some time ago. Now they appear and they won't be there later. So the only lasting thing existing in space is enlightenment, the nature of our own mind. And we meditate in that way for a few moments. Om Subhava Shuddha Sava Dharma Subhava Shuddha Ham And then out of emptiness we appear instantaneously as our yidam, if we have one. If we don't have a yidam, and so if we have a yidam it should be highest yoga tantra and ideally female tantra. But otherwise we can just appear out of space in our ordinary form, but now we are only made out of a thin layer of light. Ideally either red or blue light, whatever we prefer. And our body is completely empty, so our body is a little bit like a balloon, completely hollow inside and then only made out of that shell of light, energy and light. If we scan our body from head to toes into the fingertips, so the whole body is completely empty. meditating on the empty body, we can also try to connect already that this emptiness contains some bliss, some natural present joy. And if it's not possible to experience that right now, we just want to have that confidence that there is some like experience like that naturally possible. Inside of our empty body, at the point four finger widths below the navel, we have four small flames appearing, the size of our thumb or the thumbnail. And so these four small flames are in the cardinal directions, relatively close to each other. So the like the space in between the flames is the size of the flames themselves. And they're located deep inside of our body, so we don't have any organs, no spine whatsoever. But if we want to locate it, if we would have a spine, then it would be a little bit in front of that spine inside of the body. 
and we want to connect now energetically to that part of the body and we do that here by means of visualizing these four flames which is one of the basic tumor techniques in the Niguma system And while we visualize these flames, it's not just the, like watching a video of a fire or anything like that. These flames inside of our body are radiating in the light of a million suns, like intense heat and intense great energy and blissful experience. And also in terms of how we visualize the flames, we want to see them as exceedingly beautiful. So imagine the most beautiful piece of art you've ever seen, maybe a nice building or a nice painting. And then imagine a much, much more beautiful, at least a thousand times more beautiful than the most beautiful thing you've seen are these four flames inside of your body. Very vibrant, alive and blissful. And then for the main part of this basic practice, we meditate in conjunction with the Vars breathing. And then we meditate uh, in the way that whenever we take one of the Vars breaths, and we taught the Vars breath in detail in the previous video, part two of our three part series. So whenever then we take now a Vars breath, the wind flows through our empty body, be goes below these four flames, below our navel, and is fully absorbed by the flames. And this is really like when we have a, a, a fire or a piece of coal, a glowing coal in the fire, and we blow on it, the heat intensifies. And in this way, as the, the air we breathed in goes below the flames and is being absorbed by them, the four flames become even more vibrant, even hotter and even more blissful. And then we meditate in this way for a few breaths and with each breath the flames start growing stronger until eventually and we'll have to make our own choice when that when we meditate like that but for example at breath number three maybe that fire is already so strong that the four flames start swirling up and they create one big flame like if we put four for sticks with uh, for burning sticks close to each other eventually one big flame will emerge and so after some of the vast breathing this happens in our navel area inside of the body and as we continue to do the vast breathing then from these four flames and the one big flame coming out of them a central pillar of light starts building in the body so these four flames gently curl up and we can actually meditate it, they curl up counterclockwise through the core of our body. So first only a little bit, but the more we do the vast breathing and meditate in that way, this, there will be created a whole pillar of fire all the way into the center of our brain. But this fire never leaves our body, so it doesn't go out through the crown of our head, it also doesn't grow, go out through our nose or the third eye, nothing like that. The, yeah. It's a pillar of light all the way into the center of our brain. And it is a closed system. So this heat, this rising energy, this rising flame is not leaving in any form, in any, any form of smoke or the air or access heat. It stays within the system that we are focusing on, our central channel. And yeah, while we meditate like this, of course, we, the, the visualization is more of a technique with which we actually want to link to the energy movement of the body. So we want to be fully aware of any uh, sensations in the body. 
And even though we talk about heat or inner heat and fire, the real tumor is a very subtle warmth being generated deep inside of the body. So we just want to notice if we can connect to that sensation, if we can generate that. And we want to be mindful that this heat, this warmth is very, very blissful. And while we meditate like that, we also want to be mindful of the awareness that emerges from that practice. The consciousness that is naturally present in between our thought gaps and also beyond our thoughts. We want to look at who is actually meditating right now. Who is conscious? Who is experiencing whatever we are experiencing right now? So with this type of attitude, and if you actually have a Mahamudra or Dzogchen transmissions, then you can apply these teachings also throughout your Tumor practice. But otherwise, really just try to keep um, your mind on, on, on who is meditating right now. So we'll take maybe a total of 10 bars of breaths for a simple introduction now. And so with the first two breaths, the four flames start growing stronger. We activate the energy four finger widths below the navel. Then maybe about the, around the third breath, these four flames create one big flame. And with the next few breaths to follow, these uh, this big flame starts growing stronger and a pillar of light is being created all the way into the center of our brain. And then in your own practice, if you would like to do that meditation, of course you can only do it with three bars breaths or with one breath activating the energy. And already with the second breath, you'll have one big flame coming and the whole pillar of light appearing. But then you can also, if you want to meditate in more detail, take half an hour or one hour for that process to slowly happen. Because as we mentioned, it's really about connecting to the energy. And this energy movement then naturally evokes the state of non-dual consciousness, bliss and void. And also Tumo practice is part of the Tantric Buddhism. And the Tantra means that you are incorporating whatever you are facing in, in life into your spiritual practice and also whatever achievement of spiritual practice again you incorporate you weave it into your daily life and in on the level of meditation it means that you are not only visualize things tumo is a part of the completion and generation stage is the preparation to the tumor. So in the generation stage you might be visualizing yourself as a deity and tumor in the completion stage you're actually experiencing that. That means that in the tantric, on the tantric level, you're not only seeing things like the flame, like the rising energy, like this heat, you're not producing it intellectually. You try to tune in to your body and this neurobio uh, element within your body. The Tibetans were are calling lung, we, we are calling it either hormones or different energy transmitters um, and that will also be shifting while you're meditating. So if you we are learning to get more and more sensitive to that transformation within the body, it means that we are applying this tantric view on that meditation, meaning we are starting to feel it. So we become more attuned to this fine changes, transformations, shifts. So be also the awareness that we are generating is also on the level of the body that induces the mind's awareness and goes back to the body sensation. It is a play, it is the Tantra. It is apl uh, applying these two levels into one view that is ultimately non-dual. And so as outlined, we'll meditate in that way, in connection with the vast breathing, for about 10 breaths. So it can be less, it can be more. 
and we just whenever we have an experience of non-dual presence we just can also simply relax into that
in between your breaths you can also have breaks of normal breathing just con continuing to meditate on the four flames and the pillar of fire through the body and of course that warmth and that bliss is spreading through the whole system radiating out from that pillar of light in the center of our body and as mentioned earlier ideally we really want to notice the state of non-dual presence non-dual consciousness bliss and void and then whenever we conclude our, our meditation we we'll just continue to rest in that either really Mahamudra or Dzogchen experience or otherwise we just want to fully absorb and be mindful of what has happened in our body and mind because if you don't have strong meditation experiences it's really a matter of training and practice so we just if we apply the technique and meditate in the way as it is outlined the actual experiences of non-dual awareness bliss voidness of being will naturally occur by time so we just rest now into the natural presence of our own being then as we conclude our meditation session we can re-emerge from the space the voidness the emptiness in the form of our yidam or if we don't have a yidam we just reappear in our ordinary form Ma trying to maintain a sense that, that whatever goodness we experienced in this meditation technique and this practice is part of who we really are and this happiness we take with us into also the activities after our meditation and then we'll also want to be mindful that the whole world is like a dream like a playful theater every atom vibrating with joy everything being kept together with by love and that every sentient being has buddha nature as well and then with this mindset we'll dedicate the efforts of our practice Gelwa din yododa kolo demchok drukyonen troa chikyan mabalpa de sala gopacho chanchop samchok rinpoche maki pana kyekyoki kyepana pa mepayam gomre gondu pelvarsho by this virtue may we quickly attain the enlightened state of the wheel of supreme bliss and then may we lead all sentient beings without exception to enlightenment shores May precious and supreme bodhicitta have not yet aroused be now aroused, and if we already have some of this peerless bodhicitta, may it grow from high to higher. So thank you so much for tuning in for this uh, basic Tumo meditation. We hope you enjoyed it. 
of course, uh, as Gosha mentioned earlier, if you would be interested in going deeper into the tumor practice, learning the physical yogas that are done as preparations, and then diving deeper into the uh, completion stage method of tumor with the, ch systems. Yeah, the channels and the chakras, mm -hmm. and of course, then there's a healing tumor connected to the Buddha of longevity. Mm -hmm. So if you would be... Yeah, if you would be interested in learning some of these techniques, we'll link some of the information for you in the description. These type of Dharma activities we offer on a donation basis. So uh, you can give a donation. If you cannot afford a donation, you can just send us an email and we're happy to send you the information uh, about our classes. Yes. Having that said, we'll hope you have a good time. Yes, and hopefully it will bring benefit to those who are willing and ready to use it. This is our motivation of making this video and making maybe some of you more familiar with what Tumo is out of misconceptions and not following the, the practices that might not be Tumo. As we mentioned, there are some practices that are beneficial, but they are just not the Buddhist practice. So this presentation was about the authentic Tumo transmission in a nutshell. For more, we invite you to our classes, our Tumo sessions, maybe also our uh, other courses that are being led by our dear Lama Glenn Mullen. Thank you, thank you. See you soon.